Hi, I'm Mrs Evans and I'm a teacher at Morley Victoria. Um, as well as being a class teacher, I also lead religious education. I lead English as an additional language, so I think about the children that are bilingual or speak a second language. And I also lead the Cultural Cohesion Quality Mac, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today. So what is the Cultural Cohesion Quality Mac? So the CCQM is a quality map that was devised in need and it was a, as a recognition for organisations and communities that promote harmonious relationships between every single person. So it was actually a device to take over from the Stephen Lawrence Award, which some of you might have heard of. And the difference being that with the Stephen Lawrence Award, that was thinking more about race and how everyone was treated equally of different races, where CCQM um, has been devised so that everyone is treated equal, depending on lots of different characteristics. Um, it could be their religion and um, their ethnicity. It could be your size. It could be if you're your gender, you're male or female. So it covers everything to make sure that everybody is treated the same. So Morley Victoria is proud to be one of the first schools to sign up to the award. And we want to promote lifelong learning of understanding, inclusion, fairness and equality. We want to ensure that all individuals in our school have equal opportunities and that's all of our children and all of our staff. And we want to acknowledge all the identities in school in a positive and fair way. So we want to think about the different people that we have in our school um, and all of our different children and why that's special. Completing the um, Cultural Cohesion Quality Mac is an individual and an organisational journey. So this will be individual for the staff as well as for the whole school. And it's going to encourage learning and cultural competency. So here we have a one minute guide produced by Leeds City Council all about the Cultural Cohesion Quality Mark. So it talks a little bit about what we've just said and um, it talks about how it is awarded to different organisations. Like I said, we're one of the first schools, but all of the teams from Leeds City Council are um, working towards this award as well, as are other organisations such as different departments from the police, um, offices, lots of different people are working towards it. And they talk about they want to have a compassionate city. So Leeds is a really diverse place and lots of different people live here. And we want everybody to work together and to recognise those differences. This is the cultural cohesion step map. So I won't go through all of it, but you can see all of the different areas and different steps that we need to work through as individuals and as a school. So Morley Victoria are currently on step five. And we're currently starting to look at our knowledge and understanding of different backgrounds. So for the beginning of our journey, all of our staff signed a pledge to show that everybody is committed to it. Then all the staff took part in individual questionnaires and that was to look at different areas for development and training and which areas were we not as secure on. We've then taken part in our first session of training, which was done through Leeds City Council. And everybody has signed an agreement to say that it's OK and we understand that we might be imperfect with our regard to understanding um, and that we give ourselves permission to reveal ignorance and misunderstanding. So we're not saying that we know everything about everybody's cultures, everybody's backgrounds, but we want to learn and we want to promote it in a positive way. I just wanted to add in here the Equality Act from 2010. So the Equality Act promotes diversity and equality and stops disc discrimination. So there are actually um, a list of groups that are covered, different characteristics um, through the Equality Act. So the protected characteristics are age, disability, race, gender, gender reassignment, maternity and pregnancy, religion and belief, sexual orientation and marriage and civil partnership and more information about this can be found on our school website but as a school this is our duty that we do protect these characteristics and we make sure that we are promoting them in school and looking after everybody in our school so i also wanted to mention unconscious bias and um, because all staff will be taking part in some unconscious bias training through the city council and that is something that we have to do to achieve the CCQM. Um, so unconscious bias is where we can feed the others who maybe look like us or who share our values, or it might be somebody who we think is going to work with us in that situation. Um, and it's 
can be a preconceived prejudice idea. So it might be how we treat somebody before we've even spoken to them or found out more information about them. And the lady that has run some of our previous training spoke about if everybody had a cup and you had a jug, if you met somebody, how far would you fill up their cup with your jug of water? You know, if, if somebody who had lots of things in common and you thought, I like the look of them, are you going to fill their cup really high? Whereas somebody who you think, well, we've not got a lot in common and I don't like the way you look, are you going to fill their cup quite as high? So it's really those conversations that are going to make all of the staff think. Um, and I just really like this quote. Every interaction that we have can impact somebody's day. So we just really want our children and our staff to think everything that comes out of our mouth and everything in the way that we act, that's going to impact somebody. So we need to make sure we're constantly thinking about the way that we behave. So I just wanted to point out um, all the different meanings of the word culture and everything that's covered under it. Some of you might have seen this if you saw the home learning tasks. So when we're talking about culture, it can mean beliefs, celebrations, religions, rituals, um, and it can also cover um, different races, music, behaviour, customs. So lots of different things are covered under the word culture and what's important to, to our children. And cohesion, of course, means working together, having really strong relationships, all being linked. That word harmonious, having those really special and thoughtful relationships are really important to everybody at Morley Victoria. So the key to a harmonious society is the, cre the creation of harmonious relationships. And these relationships do not just happen. They need to be created, built and nurtured through continuous learning and development. We must teach our children to recognise the differences in a respectful and thoughtful way. OK, so although we are saying to our children, you're all equal, we don't want to say you're all the same because they're not. In school, our children speak 15 different languages between them. We have at least 16 different ethnicities and at least six different religions being worshipped. So that all depends on what parents have filled out on the census. But you can see that we do have a really diverse um, cohort of pupils at Morley Victoria and we need to celebrate that. So in our recognition and respect for cultural difference, we want to share the different cultures in our school. Staff commit to learning and understanding about our pupils, cultures and backgrounds. OK, so we don't want to just invite children to the front to continue to talk about what they've done at home. Of course, we want to share that. But as staff, we want to learn it too. We want to be able to say to the class, look, this is what a special celebration is going on in, in this culture or this religion. And then we might invite the children to talk about it alongside. We need to promote that. We want to share the cultures of the wider community. So that can be from Morley. But of course, Leeds is a very diverse place, England and the whole world. The diversity will be promoted continuously. OK, so we don't want to do it as a tokenism. We don't want to just, when it's a special religious occasion, teach time that day and it's forgotten about for the rest of the year. We don't want to just have certain books at special times of the month on our book display. We want them embedded in our, in our book corner. We don't just want to have a display another time of the year the displays need to be there showing diversity all year round okay so we want to embed it in our school life in a positive way um, and when we teach respect we'll be doing that through our PSHE lessons um, dis discreetly as well as in all our other lessons too so we're going to promote opportunities for diverse interactions. So obviously we're in a global pandemic, so it might be a little bit more difficult at the moment. And we're going to have to think carefully how we do this. Um, but we need to think about visitors, who we have into school, um, the community who, who are in Morley and the different communities in Morley, trips, so where we might go to visit, links with other schools, what resources we use, how we're using resources with diverse characters in them. We need to think about um, our pupils. Are we giving them the opportunity to have their voice? And current news when that's relevant and age appropriate. So what have the staff achieved so far on their journey to the CCQM? So we currently have a team which is led by myself and we have Mrs George from reception, Miss Owen from year two, Mr Wilkinson from year four and Mrs Bentley from year six. We've done a deep dive into our knowledge and understanding of different areas of culture, and we've identified which areas need developing further. 
If you do want to look at these, they are published on our school website so you can see exactly what we are working on. Um, in our staff meetings, we're having open discussions. We're watching, reading thought provoking material and talking about those. We're continuously looking at our planning, which I'll talk about more in a moment, but we need to think is it diverse and inclusive? We've devised a promoting diversity document to track and highlight everything that we're doing in school and we want to check if there's any gaps or anything that we need to include more of. We're making sure all of our displays are diverse and we have invested in some books and hopefully we'll be investing in more books because they're really important to be embedded in our book corners. So what have our pupils achieved so far? So we did ask our older children, our key stage two children, to complete a questionnaire that was written at an age appropriate level and um, to speak about culture and diversity. Um, and our children actually a year, a year and a half ago didn't have a good understanding of that. Um, but we do feel now our children have a, a much better and clearer understanding of what culture means and what diversity means. Um, as a school, we feel that they're proud of their culture, but they're proud of their friends' cultures. Some of the feedback on the seesaw um, was really positive, talking about learning about their friends' cultures and their, their heritage. And then through home learning, COVID's given us the perfect opportunity to encourage children to talk about and share their culture and to talk about it with their family and then share it with our school. We know that our children are proud of it and they want to share it and they want to discuss it. So thinking about planning and delivering a diverse and inclusive curriculum. As a school, we are scrutinising our whole curriculum to ensure that every, every area has opportunities to promote diversity. So this isn't just going to be in religious education or PSHE, it's going to be in all areas of the curriculum. In English, we'll be thinking about which poets, which authors are we learning about? You know, are these um, are we covering both genders or are we only teaching about famous male poets? Are we using really strong female characters? Are we using people from different ethnicities or different backgrounds in our stories? Um, and that will be for all topics, so scientists, artists, um, everything that we teach, making sure that we have a fair representation of different people. We'll also be thinking about how do we teach about different communities? OK, so are we teaching them in an empowering way using positive representations? For example, when thinking about and teaching about black history. We don't want to just teach the slave trade and talk about that. We want to talk about famous black role models and what they're doing for our community or using famous black characters in our stories for English. So it's really making us think and really making us do a deep dive into our curriculum. So after discussing this, we did devise a black history curriculum to use in school as well. And um, we felt that it was important to be embedded in the whole curriculum rather than just do it as a token black history month. And um, the black history curriculum will fit into our school topics, for example, in lower school, people who help us. Um, we'll use, make sure that we have famous black people in there. Um, in year five, we've got the space race and we've got some important characters there. And obviously in World War II, um, making sure that we cover Windrush. So Miss Owen, the year two teacher, has taken on the role of our black and ethnic minority coordinator. And she'll be continuing to develop the black history curriculum and work with teachers on that. So other school events to promote diversity. So these are all the different things that we do in school to promote diversity. We have Diversity Week, Black History Month, Refugee Week, International Women's Day, Cultural Cajun World Day, Languages Week, Anti-Bullying Week. We also have weekly PSHE lessons, British Value Assemblies and religious and cultural celebrations that we do in school. So we're working really hard to make sure that these things are embedded and that if we do do a week on, for example, Refugee Week, we don't just mention it in that week. It's going to be in our curriculum. We'll come back to it. We might read stories on it. We don't just want these to be one off events for the year. So it's really important that your children feel comfortable to talk about their culture and understand what their culture is. So there is a poster here for you to have some ideas about how to discuss culture with your child. OK, and if they come to school feeling really proud about their culture and empowered by it and ready to share with their friends, and that's going to give them a really strong start to feeling that everybody is equal in our school. OK, so you can have a little look at this and you can discuss with your child. So thank you for watching and learning a little bit more about the Cultural Cohesion Quality Map. 
um, and what we are doing in school to promote diversity. If you've got any questions, please feel free to drop me an email. Thanks. Bye.